Hey, this is Hamid from Engineering Philosophy Channel. And in this video, we're going to talk about reinforced concrete. Concrete is around us everywhere. If you think about it, our whole civilization is made of concrete. Before we talk about why civil engineers use steel in reinforced concrete, let's talk about concrete in general and what is it made of. Concrete is made of coarse aggregates like gravel, fine aggregates like sand, cement, and water. We can definitely add other ingredients to concrete to serve some specific purposes, but we will talk about that in the future videos. The impressive thing about concrete is that it is very strong in compression. Regular or unreinforced concrete has a compressive strength of around 30 megapascals. But what does that even mean? It means that you can stack five people on the top of each other over a very small area of one centimeter square of concrete and it will be fine. On the other hand, concrete is extremely weak in tension. Usually the tensile strength of concrete is around 10% of its compressive strength. This means if you have a square bar of one centimeter by one centimeter, then you can barely handle the weight of three raccoons. You are asking, how much a raccoon weigh? A big raccoon will weigh around 10 kilograms. The limitation of concrete tensile strength led ancient builders and even Gothic cathedral builders to construct arches and domes that are almost void of any tension regions. In other words, they tried to build the structures to be old in compression. If we have a simply supported beam made of concrete, and it is uniformly loaded, then we will actually have compression on the top and tension on the bottom. Now, for compression, we know that concrete is great and can take the load. However, it sucks in tension, so it will fail there. So what do we do? Engineers solve this problem by introducing or reinforcing concrete with another material that is strong in tension, mainly in the tensile region. Actually, it wasn't engineers who thought of that. The brilliant idea was discovered by the French gardener, Joseph Monnier, in the mid 19th century, who was not satisfied with the materials available for making flower pots. Clay was easily broken. So what did he do? He embedded iron into the clay flower pots to reinforce them, to make them stronger. And guess what? This guy patented the idea and even built the first ever iron reinforced concrete bridge. Nowadays, we use steel instead of just iron in our buildings and bridges. Remember, steel is an alloy of iron and carbon and other ingredients which make steel superior to the metal iron. As you can conclude from the discussion, steel is extremely strong in tension and even in compression. To put it into perspective, Remember, the square 1 cm by 1 cm rebar, if it is made of steel of a tensile strength of 420 MPa, then you can let around 400 raccoons hang to it and it will be fine. Now, you can ask, titanium is even stronger than steel, so why not use titanium? I think the reason should be obvious, titanium is much more expensive than steel. But actually the main reason we use a steel alloy is due to its special coefficient of thermal expansion. When the temperature rises, the concrete and steel will expand. If each one of them responds differently to the temperature change, then they will be debonded from each other and act separately and our structure will fail. Luckily, steel and concrete have almost a similar coefficient of thermal expansion. By the way, the field of using other metals in reinforced concrete is an active area of research. For example, in seismic areas in California and other states, researchers are trying to use memory alloys that deforms well during an earthquake, but then goes back to almost the initial shape without excessive permanent deformations. Anyways, this was just a bonus. Let's go back to regular reinforced concrete. If you are interested to learn how to design your house using reinforced concrete or pursue a career in structural engineering, 
then let me tell you more information about that. When you start learning about reinforced concrete, there are several assumptions made. Even though we said concrete has little bit of tensile strength, we actually assume it's negligible, just to be safe and make the design process easier. We also use safety factors and load combinations in our design to make our design safer. We also want the steel to yield first. Remember, steel is ductile, while concrete is brittle. In other words, steel will elongate plastically like a gum before failing. This will give the engineers a sign to ask the residents to leave the house before it falls. However, if concrete fails before steel, then we will have no sign before failing and you will be sued most probably. And concrete stress profile in the structure looks a little bit weird. So we will assume some stuff before we begin the design. So this video was a short overview of reinforced concrete. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and peace.